Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can get hyper-efficient serverless on Kubernetes powered by WebAssembly using SpinCube. SpinCube is an open source project that streamlines developing, deploying, and operating WebAssembly workloads in Kubernetes. So let's dive straight in. So here's how the SpinCube project works, and it essentially contains four parts. The first one is the container D shim spin. The second is the runtime class manager. The third is the spin operator. And lastly, you have a spin plugin called cube. So the first one at the core of the project is the container D shim spin. Now this shim implementation uses run WASI to enable container D to run spin applications uh, in a Kubernetes cluster. Essentially, this shim provides the capabilities needed in a Kubernetes cluster to pull application images from registries, uh, start the application, uh, inject configurations, and so on. The second is the runtime class manager. Now, the runtime class manager enables you to annotate your nodes to install and configure container D with the shim spin, thus enabling spin WASM applications. Uh, essentially, it also deploys pre-configured images that can run WebAssembly workloads. Now, the third one is the spin operator. Well, this wouldn't be a true Kubernetes project without an operator now, would it? Essentially, the spin operator enables you to define spin apps as native resources in Kubernetes, and it also orchestrates the creation of deployments, pods, services, and also enables integrations with containers. So thus making spin apps behave just like you would expect from any workload deployed to Kubernetes. The spin operator also watches for new spin app custom resource definitions or CRDs. Now these CRDs are created by the fourth component of this project, which is a plugin for spin called cube. Essentially this plugin converts a spin app into a Kubernetes YAML, uh, which the spin operator then reads from. So that was an overview of how it works. So let's get started with building a spin app, uh, starting a Kubernetes cluster, and then deploying this spin app into your Kubernetes cluster. Before we get started, ensure that four prerequisites are installed. The first one is kubectl, which is the Kubernetes CLI. Uh, the second is k3d, which is a lightweight Kubernetes distribution. The third is Docker for running k3d, and k3d is compatible with Docker. And the fourth one is Helm, which is a package manager for Kubernetes. Uh, it goes without saying that you need spin installed as well, but this is a video about installing spin apps, so we assume that you already have one. We're going to create a simple spin app in Rust by accepting the default values. If this is the first time you're creating a spin app, I suggest you check out our other video on creating your first spin app, which goes into the details of how it's created. For now, we're just going to cd into the folder, open this in your favorite code editor, and maybe make a small change um, to the default code that you see there in the template. Now, how you build a spin app is by using the command spin build, which is exactly what we are going to do. Spin basically has registry support, which means you can package and save your spin application as an artifact that you can then push into a registry, for instance, GHCR, which is GitHub Container Registry, or even Docker. So what we're going to do right now is exactly that. By using the command spin registry push, I'm going ahead and pushing this app into my Docker container. My Docker name is Sohan Fermion, so replace this command with your Docker username, followed by the name that you will use for your Docker container. And that's it. So this pushes your spin app to the Docker registry. Now that we have built our spin app, let's set up our Kubernetes cluster. So first create a Kubernetes cluster with a K3D image, which contains the container D shim spin that we spoke about earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and create a K3D cluster named wasm hyphen cluster. And I'm going to specify two agents that I want for this K3D cluster. 
Once that's done, we're going to install a certificate manager or cert manager from a YAML file that's already defined. So go ahead and use kubectl to do that. Once that's done, we're going to install the spin operator runtime class. Uh, again, we're going to use kubectl to do that from a YAML file that's already defined. Note that in a production cluster, you would likely want to customize this runtime class with a node selector so that it matches the nodes that have the shim installed. However, this is just a quick start video and in this K3D example, they're installed on every node. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And once that's done, we're going to apply the custom resource definitions used by the spin operator. Again, this is defined in a YAML file as you can see here. Great, now that's done, we're actually going to deploy this spin operator. Remember the spin operator does the workload lifecycle management. So it's used to schedule and manage spin applications as custom resources. So it watches for new spin app CRDs and it also creates a spin app using the specified executor. We're going to install the spin operator using Helm, which is a package manager for Kubernetes. So this will create all of the Kubernetes resources required by the spin operator under the Kubernetes namespace spin hyphen operator. It may take for a moment for this installation to actually compile as uh, the dependencies are installed and the pods are actually spinning up. Perfect, and once that's done, you want to create the shim executor, again, using kubectl and a YAML file that's already defined. Again, the spin app executor is a CRD utilized by spin, and it sort of determines which executor type should be used while running a spin app. So let's go ahead and create that. Great, so we created a spin app, we pushed it to the registry, we created a Kubernetes cluster, and we deployed a spin operator. Now it's time to run the sample application. We're going to use the spin plugin named Cube to sort of scaffold and create a YAML file, which then we can use with kubectl to deploy our app onto Kubernetes. So go ahead and type spin space cube scaffold and reference the registry that you had created earlier, and you can output or you can pipe the output into a YAML file, which we are calling spinapp.yaml. As you can see, this is what spinapp.yaml looks like. You can see um, an API version, you can see some metadata, including the name of the app, uh, as well as the fact that there are two replicas created. So now when you do a kubectl apply and then reference that particular YAML app, your spinapp is now created in the Kubernetes cluster. You can take a look at all the K3D clusters that you're currently running with the command K3D cluster list. And if you do kubectl get SVC or get services, you can list all the services in the namespace. As you can see, the SpinCube app is running right now. That's the service that's running that's been pinged from a particular IP address. To see the output of the app, uh, forward a local port to the application pod so that it can be reached. I'm just gonna use the command kubectl port forward SVC followed by the name of my spin app and specify a port. There we go. So now in another terminal, if I just ping localhost, you can actually see the output from our spin app. So this spin app is running in our K3D Kubernetes cluster right now. Check out spincube.dev for more details and documentation, including how you can scale up uh, your spin apps in Kubernetes clusters with things like HPA or KIDA. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more information. Until then, see you soon.